Welcome to this ESCO Software Solution Demonstration Series. In this episode, we will be covering ESCO Studio Tools. All participants have been muted, and at the end of this demonstration, we will unmute for Q&A. My name is Bart Mearshart, and I will be your host today. Stay tuned for additional sessions and an event calendar will be hosted on esco.com brand solutions. So in today's session, we will give you a high level overview of ESCO Studio Tools. Studio Tools are plugins for Adobe Illustrator, which will turn Illustrator from a design tool into a production tool, giving you the capability to create high, highly realistic 3D models in a fraction of the time. In this overview, you can see on the left-hand side that we first need structural files. Structural files will depend on the type of SKU that you are producing, cartons and displays. The Studio Toolkit offers a toolkit for labels, as well as a flexible toolkit and a shrink and sleeve toolkit. The former two, the cartons and the labels, is covered in our Studio Essential pack. The flexibles and shrink is covered in the Studio Advanced pack. Once we have structure and we indicated the printable area on that structure, we can then bring that structure into Adobe Illustrator and marry the graphics together with the structure. This is the first moment of truth. From here, we can start prototyping in Illustrator and apply any type of finishing effect. Sharing these assets is easy using the Free Studio Viewer or using our ESCO Web Center solution to share these assets. Last but not least, we can also place these in the final retail environment. Join us for another session, Store Visualizer, to cover that. So let's head on over to Adobe Illustrator and cover these four toolkits. Let's start with cartons and displays. For cartons and displays, we offer the Studio toolkit for boxes, which allows you to start from a standard box. So let's say we have a cornflakes box uh, with a six height, 12 and width 1.5 inches. This gives you an opportunity to quickly create a basic box and this can now be placed in your Illustrator document. You can indicate the front orientation. We can save this and we can place this. Using the Studio Toolkit, you can now immediately see here what that 3D looks like in Illustrator. Notice if we select specific panels, Illustrator will highlight the panel that I have chosen here. I also recommend to use the free trim box and media box tool to automatically fit the Illustrator canvas to the cat file that we just created. This is an example of a basic box. Now, what about files that you receive from vendors. And let's say you receive an Illustrator file, PDF file, EPS file, it doesn't matter. Can we use the ESCO toolkit for boxes to upgrade this file to an ESCO studio file? The answer is yes. So the way we would do that is we would select these specific lines 
and here I'm going to use the uh, select same appearance. These lines right here represent crease lines. So how do we upgrade these lines to uh, more intelligent lines? Well, after you install the software, you'll notice here that uh, we provide a free swatch library called Ardios CAD line types. So these line types allow you to assign characteristics to these lines. So in this case, this uh, is supposed to be a crease line. Now notice I added that to the uh, fill. So let's switch that to the stroke and let's not uh, use the fill attribute. And then we would do the same thing for the cut lines right here. So we would select the same uh, appearance to select all those lines. And here we would assign uh, the cut Arduous CAD line type. Notice that little dot indicating here that I have assigned that or I can hit down, I can hold down my shift key to see the uh, fill that I applied. So once you have applied these, we can now select these lines and we can save these right here as an Ardios CAD file. Um, I noticed uh, right here is one little line that I was not intended to uh, include. So we're going to see if we can exclude that from our uh, selection. Let's just go ahead and delete this. And let's go and save this right here on the desktop. Um, notice here we can uh, save these uh, selected objects using these line type swatch styles that I have assigned. And we can also uh, indicate if we want to place this immediately back into the document. So let, let's place this again on our desktop. Um, in this case, the uh, Ardeus CAD does not have any folding angles. So the crease lines are automatically folded uh, to 90 degrees. So if we use our studio uh, plugin again, we can see now that we have a 3D of that uh, shape. So those are some of the examples. So um, here you can see a Ardeus CAD file that was designed in Ardeus CAD. Um, follow us uh, for an episode covering Ardeus CAD uh, later. This one has all the information, all the metadata that is required, as you can see here all the information from Ardeus CAD is retained, including an indication of your artwork panel, your dimension, your bleed lines, and so on and so on. Once we have all that information, we can start uh, generating art on these panels and updating my designer. We can now see the graphics and the structure come together here in my studio designer window. This is a basic designer quality, which you can see here highlighted. So this uh, focuses just on print modeling. So not on any type of finishes. I can go ahead and export this information. Before I do that, I might want to change the look and feel of this 3D pack shot. And I can do that here by adjusting the shadow contrast, background, floor reflections, and view angles. Once I am happy with that, I can go ahead and export this as an image, an image sequence, a Colada 3D uh, file, a PDF file, for example, uh, right here with 3D uh, capabilities, U3D, uh, or other formats.
What about print finishing? Well, that's where we can switch to the higher quality, the visualizer quality, which uh, will allow you to assign different types of finishes, which you can access here from the finishing operation library. So in this library, you will find a list of materials, uh, standard materials like papers and craft papers and fibers and foil boards, uh, to uh, board liners, uh, second layer materials, uh, plastic films, uh, right here, process colors, special inks, coatings, laminations, foils, um, seal crimping and embossing, and then uh, a whole uh, list of finishing operations right here, uh, Pantone from our sister company and others. So those can be easily added into your finishing operations uh, right here. And then you can assign those to objects. So in this case, I selected this gray box and I assigned a silver cold foil to that object. And indeed, when you select the visualizer quality right here, you can see the effect of that uh, varnish, that silver on that object. So you can rotate the object, you can also rotate the environment around the object, and you can even admire your 3D in full screen. Again, generating uh, output from here, we can do using the export uh, capability here. So this covers the toolkit for boxes. Now let's have a look at the toolkit for labels. So here you can see that I have a pill bottle and I have a roll around label that you can see here in the background. So first question is where did that pill bottle come from? Well, uh, as you install the toolkits, you also have access right here to the Shapes Store. So the Shapes Store has a series of standard type of, um, of uh, models like uh, blister packs, beverage cans, bread bag, uh, right here, bottles, deodorant sticks, and so on, so on. So um, for this example, I used a, uh, right here, tablet uh, bottle. And you can see here that all the attributes were defined in there, as well as the actual uh, 3D Colada model right here that you can see the ZAE file. So this is the file that I placed in my document. And after I placed it, um, the print model was already defined, the printable area, which in this case was a roll around label. And the only thing I had to do was provide my graphics for that label. And seconds later, I can now switch back to my visualizer quality and start generating high resolution pack shots. For um, the label toolkit, uh, you can also use your own outlines. Here, for example, uh, you can see the outline of a bottle. So this uh, toolkit for labels allows you to, uh, right here, use a shortcut, Command-Shift-8. Um, you can select these uh, outlines that we created and those will be revolved around the axis of your choice right here. Uh, you can set the material. So we make this uh, a clear plastic, for example. And then in the next screen, you can see here that you have the opportunity to add labels to this model. So this uh, essentially defines that printable part around that object. So you can do that interactively or numerically right here and once 
this is uh, defined, we can go ahead and save this and place this in my current document, after which we now have a printable area and we can start uh, creating our art on that. So that is the toolkit for labels. Now, let's go back to our overview. So far, we have covered Carton's uh, toolkit, the toolkit for boxes, and the toolkit for labels. Again, those are part of the Studio Essential offering. Now let's have a closer look at Flexibles and Shrink. Here is an example of a flexible bag. You can see here the bag in its uh, flat state, in its uh, two-dimensional state. And then here on the right-hand side in my Studio Designer window, we can see what that bag looks like in a 3D uh, environment. Switching back over to uh, Visualizer, we can start seeing some more of the characteristics. And then obviously adding graphics to this and special finishing, we can generate a very realistic looking uh, bag. So right here, we can even see the uh, crimping, a tear notch, and right here, uh, a hanger uh, hole. So this is an example of the toolkit for bags. So the question um, that comes to mind right away is, well, where did we create this 3D model? In order to create this 3D model, we use our Studio Toolkit application. So this is a free application you can download from our website. Um, and within here, um, you will have to purchase these additional uh, toolkit licenses in order to unlock the bags, the labels, or the sleeve. In the case of bags, we can start creating that 3D bag shape by picking from these nine different basic shapes. For this, I used a stand-up pouch. And in this editor, I can define the width, length, and depth, as well as the seal information, whether it's an open gusset or not, the material properties of that bag, matte or glossy, rounding, and then we can go into a life shaping where I can now start injecting air and liquid and interact with the stiffness of that bag. So you can see by injecting air, this life rendering will now start shaping this bag. As I shape, I can also use any of these uh, tools here to give that bag the exact look and feel that I require. Once I am done styling, I can save this as a Colada file and place it in my Illustrator document. So that's how you can generate these bags. Okay, so now that we covered the toolkit for bags, let's uh, switch on over to the next toolkit. Um, by the way, before we do that, um, just a, a quick um, FYI, how did I, was I able to, you know, set the scrimping and this, uh, these other uh, finishes? Well, again, as we saw earlier in the finishing operation, uh, you might have noticed this seal crimping and this embossing. So what I've done to simulate that is essentially create these objects right here in Adobe Illustrator and then assigned these finishes to those objects. So for example, here, if I uh, select uh, this part, 
uh, might be on a locked layer. Uh, indeed it is. So let's unlock these layers. So you can see here this um, object right here, for example, has uh, been assigned that uh, specific finish. So here uh, we can see the embossing and debossing uh, detailed assigned to that. This one uh, here, for example, um, I've assigned the uh, die cut right here to give uh, that notch. Okay. So those are some of the things you can experiment with to give it really that, that realistic uh, view that you are looking for. Okay, moving uh, right along to the next uh, toolkit, and that would be the toolkit for shrink. So with that, uh, I have a little example here of a uh, shower gel uh, bottle with a shrink uh, around it. The shape of this bottle, since it's uh, tapered, um, actually came from the shapes store. Um, we already noticed with the toolkit for labels that we can create our own shapes, but keep in mind, those are symmetrical, right? So if you have a very specific type of uh, 3D model product, you can always use high-end 3D design software to create these models, like Cinema 4D, Maya, Rhino, Modo, uh, you name it. Once you have that model, you can then bring that model uh, into our toolkit to indicate the printable part. In our case, that's a shrink, but it could also be a label. So let me give you an example of uh, what that would look like. So again, in our uh, studio toolkit, we can then import the um, 3D model that we just created. So let's see. Um, right here let's go to the uh, shower gel bottle right here so this is a uh, shower gel bottle so notice that the uh, studio toolkit allows you to import all these different file formats so from your high-end 3d design software you can create your model and then import that model in here. So we are looking at a standard uh, Colada file. So once uh, we open it, we will need to indicate a printable part on this model. Otherwise, Illustrator would simply not know where to place these graphics or how to distort those graphics. I mentioned earlier that um, in order to use these additional plugins, you will need a license, whether that is for the toolkit for bags, toolkit for labels, or for, sleeve, for a shrink sleeve. So uh, here, an example of uh, the toolkit for labels, again, where we saw earlier that we can indicate that printable part inside Adobe Illustrator in the toolkit for labels. Um, we can also indicate that area right here by adding a front label, a back label, a wraparound, or a freeform label. So freeform will give me the opportunity to brush uh, an area uh, on here. And this doesn't need to be uh, super precise as long as it encompasses uh, the area where you will uh, place your graphics, uh, you're fine. Okay, so you will uh, paint that on there. Uh, once done, you know, you save it as a colada, bring it into Illustrator and start adding your graphics. Let's undo that. In the case of uh, a shrink sleeve, the printable part is the actual sleeve, which goes around the Z axis, the uh, Y axis, or the uh, X axis. So in this case, we want to create that sleeve around the object like so. The total cut length 
is going to need to be a six and a half inch and we're going to have to shift that up a quarter inch so here um, you can see visually the effect of uh, those um, operations uh, that you are indicating here so and then um, we can indicate whether it's a left over right right over left the position of the actual seam which is indicated here by uh, these two uh, green lines and this little uh, dot so you can also use that to move that uh, seam where you want to position it and and then uh, we have the material shrinkage uh, factors right here the stretch and then the shrinkage uh, in the vertical and horizontal direction again once uh, you're happy with these parameters you hit the shrink button and this will now simulate a heat tunnel so you can see my uh, shrink is a little too short uh, so I can restore that and we can increase that so these um, parameters typically are provided to you by your uh, supplier and if not uh, you can do this with trial and error so once uh, you're happy again we come in here and we save this as a uh, colada file place this in Adobe Illustrator and now we can start uh, positioning our graphics in here. So when it comes to shrink sleeve, um, it is very difficult to make sure that your graphics uh, end up uh, exactly the way they were intended. One of the benefits of this shrink toolkit is that it allows you to distort both line work, vector, as well as image data and you can see here when I hover over the original uh, brand name Ulsys right here and you can see the before and after so the uh, software automatically distorted this in order to make sure that it fits properly on to that uh, shrink sleeve that is done using our uh, shrink uh, parameters right here so in our uh, illustrator windows esco uh, we come down here and you can see here the pre-distortion modify and release so the show pre-distortion shows me um, the distortion and then the floating window gives me all the controls i need in order to distort those specific graphics so a real, real big time saver. From here, uh, again, we can export these uh, 3D models using our export capability. One of the uh, pretty uh, powerful ways to export is uh, the uh, Colada file. So after I set here my uh, activate my visualizer quality which renders it more realistically uh, we have looked at earlier at shadow contrast and floor effects but uh, inside the visualizer environment I can also indicate the lighting environment right how does the light interact with my uh, substrate and with my model so here I placed it in a photo studio which gives me this you know uh, nicer cleaner harder light um, I can now go ahead and export this as we saw earlier one of the um, interesting choices here is the Colada file format this file can be sent to your uh, stakeholder for review or marketing person let's say um, and they can use the Android or um, Apple uh, studio app that they can download for free and uh, receive this on their tablet or iPhone and see the model as you intend it we also have a standalone viewer you can download um, and uh, that way your uh, recipient can view the way you intended that design 
Obviously, we also have our Web Center cloud-based uh, platform allowing you to push these assets into this cloud-based packaging um, system for review. With that, we have come at the end of this presentation. In this presentation, we have covered a high-level overview of ESCO Studio Tools. In this presentation, we saw that the toolkit for boxes and labels is part of the essentials. You can add flexibles and shrink using the advanced toolkit. Once we defined our 3D model and printable area, we can bring this into Adobe Illustrator and start adding graphics. <clears throat> Using the visualizer mode, we can use the finishing operations for prototyping. Sharing these assets, we can do in a variety of ways. And last but not least, we can also bring this into our store visualizer. That we will cover in an upcoming session. So thank you for joining me today, and we will stop the recording and open it for questions.